Throughout our work with integration so far, we've considered 2D areas trapped under curves. We're now going to extend this to 3D and focus on volumes. If we take a curve, say y is equal to x squared, and rotate it 360 degrees or 2 pi radians about a straight line, we form what's called a solid of revolution. So that straight line might be the x or the y axis. In this video, we're going to look at the volume of revolution. Firstly, let's look now at the formula we used for the volume of revolution. The volume is given as the integral from now a to b of pi multiplied by y squared dx. Now, often in maths, when we look at some of these formulae, they're not always intuitive. I think this one is probably the most intuitive one we know. Now, we know the integral is a summation. Essentially, what this is, is the summation of lots of little disks that lead now to a volume. So let's look at a curve. Let's just draw up a curve. And what we're going to have is the curve. And we will have now, uh, let's just draw here, we'll have y is equal to x squared. So if I draw that up, it'll look something like that. What I'm going to do is take now a sliver. And I'm going to call that sliver delta x. That's going to be now a really thin sliver just here. So it's going to have a width of delta x. So that width right there is delta x. Now what we're going to do is rotate this now about the x-axis. So I'm going to spin this curve. So if you can imagine when you see a megaphone, that's what it's going to look like. Or if you like a vase, we're going to have now a solid. We're going to have a volume uh, come from this. Now if we consider what we've got here is a height here of y. So we end up now with a height of y and a thickness of delta x. This is going to give us now a cylinder or a disc. So if we look at this, we can end up with something like this. Now, as delta x tends to zero, such that this becomes so, so small, we get these tiny little rings with thickness delta x. And when we're talking delta x, we're talking these infinitesimally small widths. Now, if we consider what this is now, we've got here a radius now on here of y. So if I have a thickness here of delta x, and that really is small, what we can say is the volume, and we'll call it now, uh, let's call it, uh, and we'll say now, it's just going to be the volume. So we could just say now for each of these, the volume of each one is going to be, and this is the volume of a cylinder. So we could say that it would be pi r squared. Now r is going to be y, so we'd have pi y squared. And in fact, let's call it, uh, let's call it delta v. We'll say that one of these is delta v, and that will now be delta x. Just consider lots of these little slivers now. They are cylinders. So what we're going to have is a summation of these. Now, as delta x tends to zero, we can essentially use this formula to sum all of these little slivers. So if I add one next to it, and next to it, and next to it, and so on, as now delta x gets so small, we can actually say now that the volume will be equal to the integral from a to b of pi y squared dx. Now, if you need to look at um, integration essentially from first principles, there are plenty of videos on that. But all we're doing is simply summing this up. Now, if we looked at that, and this is the curve right here, this is y is equal to x squared. So this is now just the, uh, the quadratic equation that we've met before. And we can see these disks. The more disks we put on, i.e. the uh, smaller the value of delta x, which we got just here, we can have disk after disk after disk sitting next to each other, which will give us now this volume. And that's why when we look at the formula, the volume is given as the integral from now a to b of pi multiplied by y squared. Remember, y is essentially this function height right here, dx. We can see where this comes from. It's just a load of disks added together. Okay, should we have a look at it in action and see a, a, a pretty good example of, of why you all, where you may have met this before. So let's let's just draw up some, let's draw up a straight line. Um, let's grab this and we will draw now up a line. So what I'm going to do is have now this length right here. So if I said that this length, let's say that this was going to be h and the height of this was going to be r. Let's just put those on. Let's just say now that this is a line going through the origin. This is going to be h. This is going to be r. Therefore, this point right here will be h comma r. Now, if we look at the gradient of this line m, what we've got here now is r over h. Okay, that's now the rise over the row or the change in y over the change in x. Given that this now is zero, this point has an x corner of h and then a y corner of r just here. 
So let's have a look at this. So what we've got then is r over h. So I could say now that my f of x, or we could say that y, is equal to r over hx. Now this is this line right here, coming from the origin, so that's what we're going to get. Now what I'm going to do here is apply the formula. The volume is given as the integral from a to b of pi multiplied by y squared dx. So let's look at this one. Our volume will be the integral, and I can put pi the other side of the integral sign. Pi is just a constant, it's just a number. We're going from 0 to h, so we're going from 0 to h of y squared. Now that's going to be r over hx, and we need to square that term. And that will now be integrated with respect to x. Now let's consider r over h, all squared, is going to be now a constant. So we can write this as the volume will be equal to pi r squared over h squared, now multiplied by the integral from 0 to h of x squared dx. So what I've done here, I've squared the function. I've defined the function y to be r over hx. I've squared it. I'm now going to integrate it. So what we're going to get then is the volume will be equal to pi r squared over h squared. Now, if I integrate this, now x squared with respect to x, I'm going to get one third x cubed. So I'm going to get one third x cubed, and we're interested now in evaluating this from zero to h. Now, if I sub these in, what we're going to end up with now is the following. We're going to have the volume will be pi r squared over h squared, subbing in h, I'm going to have one third h cubed, subbing in zero, I'm going to have zero. So if we now simplify this, what we're going to have, uh, let's write here, volume is going to be pi r squared. Now consider h squared and h cubed, that's going to cancel to give me h, and then over 3. Now you might recognise this, the volume is pi r squared height divided by 3, or one third pi r squared height. If you go back lower down the school, you will have done the volume of a cone. The volume of a cone, as we can see just here, let's draw this out. Let's just do that. What we're going to have, if we have now a cone with radius r, which is going to be that, and height h, the volume can be given now, and I'll just put these on. So that's going to be r. This is going to be h. We can say now that the volume is going to be one third pi r squared height. And that is the formula that you get now in your exam. And that shows now an example of why rotating this about this straight line, namely the x-axis, gives us this solid formed. And we can show by integration these basic results. So if you ever look in your GCSE book and see, well, you know, that's this one right here, you can now show that with integration. So there we go. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to work through a few of these examples. If you want a very formulaic approach, take the function y, square it, integrate it, evaluate it, and multiply it by pi. So that's a very formula, a formulaic way of thinking about it. The majority of mistakes made by students are either the student not squaring the function or not multiplying it by pi. So let's go ahead and try a few of these.